guys, this is Jason here with you guys, and today we are making previewing the Oregon Oregon State game, um, four four o'clock p.m. on ESPN two in Eugene. Uh, it's gonna be a fun game. It's senior day for Oregon. Um, Oregon coming off of that win against Arizona last week to make them boy eligible. Um, Oregon State. Uh, since losing it to Stanford in a close game, this team hasn't been the same. They lost to Arizona State last week at home um, in a convincing fashion. Um, so Oregon State trying to um, upset the Ducks in the 100th and the 21st meeting uh, between these two teams, the fifth most. Cardiff's football rivalry played, uh, so it should be a fun game. You got Justin Herbert for Oregon, um, 1,500 yards, 10 touchdowns, 3 picks. Um, Herbert made his return last week, and Herbert threw the ball quite well. He ran the ball as well, too, so it should be a, should be a good game. Um, Nana Garrison for Oregon State has threw um, 12, 1,200 yards per se, five touchdowns to his pitch. Um, right now, he's, he's the best player that Oregon State has out of Sandy, Oregon, went to Central Catholic, and um, he should be a wrecking ball. Um, they call him wrecking ball. Um, he had a big game against Oregon State last year with three touchdowns. I um, mean, he got 770 yards and eight touchdowns as well, too. Um, White Nord's a good back. I, I'd seen him in high school. Um, followed his career at Oregon State for the most part. And this, this guy's a good running back. If he gets into any open space, He's a really physical back, um, just like Russ Freeman. Um, so it should be a good game. Um, for any Duck fans that should know, this is um, Thomas Tyner's first game at Oregon as a visitor. Uh, Thomas Tyner, um, he played a couple of years at Oregon, hurt his shoulder, and went to Oregon to stay on a medical red shirt. On one out, so well, no, Thomas Tyner retired from football and um, instead to play for Oregon State. So um, he will be suited up as a Beaver on a Saturday. Um, Oregon State's offense 21 points um, per game, um, 203 passing, and 141. Rushing the ball, and this defense has really got gas. It's 463. They give up uh, yardage wise 230, 234 passing, 228 um, rushing. They give up per game. Um, Oregon's defense is a lot better than last year. We all know that Oregon State ran the ball, I want to say, 30 times in a row. I, I don't think Nall gets 30 Ks in this game. He, he should. Corey Allen should have given him the ball 30 times. But I don't think that's going to be the case. I think the case is going to be, I think Hogan's going to get up, get up early and probably win this game going away. Um, hopefully it's not the Civil War that we saw a couple years ago. Hogan gets to a big lead and Oregon State made it into a ball game. Oregon did win that game um, in 2015, but it wasn't that big of a margin that Oregon was up. So, um, but this is the Civil War. You could really throw out the record books. Um, this, these two teams played as a top 10 team once. That was 2000 when Oregon Went up there with Joey Harrington and the company, and really, really got beat. Got beat pretty good. Oregon State 
turn over the jelly head and turn four or five times and it was really a difference in that ball game. Um, this this is a war game can really be it's a really good game. It's a really good rivalry, especially when these two teams are playing good and whatnot. So it, it should be a really exciting matchup. I know Oregon's favored by 23 or 24 points, but it it's it should be a good game. It's a rivalry game. Um, I know I would have been nervous if Oregon would have lost last week and. Um, needing this game to go bowl eligible, but that's that's not the case. Oregon, it's six and five, and Oregon stays on the one one game. But with Oregon State probably playing for Corey Hall, um, this is Corey Hall's last opportunity to make a case to get that head of coaching the job. Um, I believe he should have get it. Um, Honestly, I think if you look at Oregon State's coaching the sets, I think it's either going to be Corey Hall, Mike Wright, Jonathan Smith, somebody that knows that program and can recruit two Corvallis. Um, otherwise, saying that, um, this is really Tiger's first coaching, uh, first Civil War coaching, obviously, in his first year. He's done a really good job with this Oregon team, I believe. Um, Oregon's averaging 40 points per game when Justin Hervis that started. Um, about 15 points when he's not. So that's something to look in. This Oregon defense is only giving up 30 points per game. That's a lot better than last year. Um, I don't know if you guys really noticed this or really care about this, but this is, I believe, the first Civil War that two African-American head of coaches are uh, coaching the Civil War. So that's a really big deal with it being the 100th and the 21st meeting between these two teams. Um, the way that I think that this game's going to go is I think Oregon's going to, Probably get on a big and probably um, run away and hide with this game. But it could be a close game. It's a civil war. Um, we all know this. Um, that it, it could be a close game. It could not be. But it should be a really good, exciting game to watch. Oregon should win this, get on the seventh win, and Oregon State's just. Playing, playing for pride at this point. But like I said, 4 o'clock p.m. on ESPN to Saturday. I hope you guys are having a great Thanksgiving. A lot of good sports games. A lot of good basketball. Oregon basketball is on tonight. And a lot of good football too. So, my name's Bennett Jason. Have a great day and go Ducks.